I am so thrilled and excited because we have a guest now that's joining us via Skype from Autism Speaks. It is Dr. Paul Wong, and he is Autism Speaks Senior Vice President and Head of Medical Research. He is also a developmental behavioral pediatrician. Dr. Wong, thank you so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here, and, and we've asked you to come specifically to talk about a new initiative that Autism Speaks has uh, that's for research for the gut-brain connection. Can you tell us what this new initiative is, what the gut-brain connection uh, might be, and why this is so exciting? We, we really are very excited about this. So we've put out what we call an RFA, that's a request for applications, a request for grant applications uh, for researchers, scientists from anywhere around the world, really, to send in to us their ideas on what kind of research uh, we should be doing right now to better understand the connection between the gut, the gastrointestinal tract, uh, and the behavioral processes uh, that are the core part of autism. So we, we understand more and more uh, that, first of all, a lot of people with autism have gut problems, have GI problems. Uh, that is something that I think families have known for a long time. A little bit sad to say, but I think it, it took doctors, it took the research community a while to be convinced of that. Uh, but now they are convinced. There's been great research over the last two years, uh, some of it coming from California, from what they call the CHARGE study, which uh, is really headquartered at the MIND Institute out there in Sacramento. And then also uh, an even bigger study coming from our own Autism Speaks Autism Treatment Network, just showing how very common these GI problems are. And of course, there's a range of those problems, uh, everything from constipation to diarrhea to unexplained apparent you know, abdominal pain, gastrointestinal pain. Uh, a lot of food problems, food allergies, food aversions, uh, bad reactions apparently when certain foods are ingested. We know that there are a lot of these issues. We don't understand them well enough. And we don't understand exactly what kind of impact they have on the other behavioral problems that we see in autism, things that don't seem like they're related to the gut, but a lot of people are suggesting could be. You know, maybe some of the communication problems, maybe some of the social problems. It really seems like a lot of the anxiety issues uh, that we see in, in autism might be related to GI issues. Uh, so we are asking for researchers' best ideas on how to explore that. Uh, and we're going to put at least a million and a half dollars, potentially more, behind that research effort. In fact, uh, in, the, in the release that you say uh, that you guys have put out, it says that you are going to be able to give m potentially multiple five hundred thousand dollar grants for a period of up to three years. Is that correct? That's right. the The largest, the cap on the size of the grant is half a million dollars a year for three years. So that's the largest any one grant can be. Uh, but if we have more than one great idea, more than one grant application that really looks promising, uh, we will try to find the money to, to fund multiple grants. This is so exciting, and I know parents are going to want more information about this study. And if there is a research group out there, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, that they're finding out where to get information. Where should people go, Dr. Wong, to find out more? The best place to go is our website, autismspeaks.org. Um, it's one of the headline stories, you know, that, that switches, that uh, sort of scrolls between a, different, a few different headline stories. You can also look at the science uh, section of our website, and there's a full announcement there. 